everybody, Luxinda Swirl here. We are going to do something with our Arteza ready to go pouring paints that I have yet to try with those. I've done them with other pouring paints. I am going to make a skin from an acrylic pour, a dirty cup pour, and when that skin is dry, we are gonna wrap it around a tumbler. So this is another way to get acrylic paint onto a tumbler. Uh, without, you can do a dirty pour over the base like you would a vase. You can put this on a turner and do a dirty pour over that while it's turning. I've done those tests, but what I haven't done yet is make the skin and wrap it around. So this is a Craft Haven, well, this is a 20 ounce skinny straight, meaning that the circumference and diameter is the same at the top as it is at the bottom. There is no taper. It is a straight shot there. So that makes it incredibly easy to wrap. And uh, that's what we're gonna do. This is from the Craft Haven. I'll link to that. I'll link to everything below, as usual, in the description box. So, previously, and I will link to these videos below as well, I have tried doing this with Deco Art Fluid Art Ready to Pour. I had great success with this. This works really well for creating a skin to, to put on a tumbler. I also had good luck with um, mixing, mixing and using my own paints. It, it worked especially well. I used Liquitex pouring medium instead of Floetrol. So I haven't tested it with Floetrol, but I've seen other people do that and that works as well. So you can use your own paints. The one case where I had a horrible, horrible disaster was when I tried doing a skin for a tumbler with Artist Loft Ready Mix pouring paints. This stuff never dries adequately. It remains sticky. And as soon as any piece of it touches another piece of it, which seems to happen when you're trying to flip things around and wrap them and whatnot, it welds together. And every time I try this, I ended up with a welded lump of paint that I would throw against the wall in frustration. I mean, it just, it's just, I will never, ever, ever try this again with this paint. It's great for pores, but it's horrible for skins, at least big ones. And these are pretty big. Um, so here are the colors I've picked from what's left in my Arteza 32 color pouring box. We have pastel yellow, phthalo blue, bronze, metallic wine red. So these are my, my two metallics, which I hope add a little extra shimmer to everything. Lavender, rose pink, titanium white, and what they call forest green, but honest to God, folks, that's turquoise. So um, those are the colors I'm going to use. I have all ready to go here a sheet protector. This is You can pour onto other things. You can pour onto freezer paper. You can pour onto um, acetate. Uh, in my case, I use these eight and a half by 11 notebook sheet protectors. You can see there's that's where the little holes go, three ring binder. And I've got a piece of paper stuck inside of it just so you can see the area we're, we're concentrating on because this produces a skin that is perfect for wrapping a 20 ounce skinny or a 20 ounce skinny straight. So that's why I'm using this. Plus I have a ton of them. I bought a package of them years ago and I've still got most of them left. Experience has shown me that I need about four ounces of paint. So here is a five ounce cup. We are going to go up, you know, above the top ridge here. That should be good. And then we will do a pour. I will tilt. I have this attached to a uh, canvas board I got at Walmart. It's nice and sturdy, so I can pick it up and tilt it and put it back down, and it doesn't really matter if it gets paint on it or not, because I've used it for this before. And then I will let it dry, and I will bring you back when we're ready for the next step, which is how to wrap it around the tumbler and finish this project. Okay, so. Layering our cup. First paint in, last paint out. So I want colors I really, really like in the beginning. Start with lavender. I'm gonna try and use a lot of little layers so I get a lot of action.
I think that's good. That should be more than enough. Let's move everything off to the side. Now this is, uh, I don't need to tilt off like I would with a painting unless I have too much paint on my area, in which case I can tilt off, obviously. So I may do that, we'll see how it looks. But first, let's do a traveling tree ring. I want as much coverage as I can get before I start tilting, I think. So let's try that. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. And now we tilt. All right, I'm basically looking for something that's gonna provide a really interesting uh, design in the middle area, and I think that's pretty darn cool. So I'm gonna leave it here. This works well for me. <laughs> Hopefully it worked well for you. Um, okay, so what happens next is I put this aside and this will dry mostly overnight, and then I will take it off the sheet protector. I'll bring it back for that. It may end up having to dry on the other side once we remove it from the sheet protector. And then once it is completely dry on both sides, we will wrap it around our tumbler and see what we get. Stay tuned. And we're back. So this has had a chance to dry overnight. It's still a bit sticky to the touch, uh, but it's dry enough that I'm going to try and get it off the sheet protector and flip it over so both sides have a chance to air dry for a couple more days, or at least one more day. Um, so this is me trying to get this off the sheet protector. We'll see how this goes because if I can get it past this part and safely get the whole thing off the sheet protector, then we're in pretty good shape to get it onto a tumbler. So let's just see how this goes. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful on the back. Look at that. Wow. That is gorgeous. All right, so I'm going to let this dry. Like I said, another 24 hours or so. We'll come back and we'll put it on the tumbler. Stay tuned. We are back. We are going to attempt the next step of this project, which is putting this wrap onto this tumbler. I will tell you that if this is dried 24 hours on both sides, and it is still extremely sticky. In fact, just getting it set up for this 
portion of our video, it almost welded together a couple of times. I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, you know, trying to separate the, the flaps from themselves when it folded over. So I have it on parchment paper because it won't stick to that. And uh, I have my Mod Podge in a little lid from a two ounce Jello Shot cup here. And I have my brush and I have my tumbler. And I am going to try and do this. I'm a little nervous about it because of the stickiness. I think when we get to the part where things overlap, uh, I may have some problems. <laughs> you may never see this video. <laughs> if I have enough problems, then it all goes to heck in a handbasket. I am going to start from this side. This is the back. This is really cool too, but I want to stay, I want to stay with the side we, we poured. And I think, well, let's figure this out before I start. I think I'm gonna put the aqua turquoise, uh, what was that, the forest green that isn't? This is the top. This is where we're gonna start. And it's sticking to the cup. I am going to start by putting Mod Podge on my cup and we're just gonna roll. I mean, that's really the, the, the step we're, we're at here, so. There we are. Now, <laughs> here's the part that makes me nervous. This is gonna start sticking to itself, as you can see. Okay, we can do this, we can do this. Here is our, our overlap, that's where that starts. I think you can see it, there's a line there. Nerve wracking, nerve wracking, nerve wracking. Okay, cutting all the way through both layers. To try and uh, peel this off. Come on, you can do it. And this is the easy one. Okay, Whew. one down. Now, now we get into the tricky part. So I have to peel this back, even though it won't want to. And it's going to stretch. And I've taken my glasses off for some reason. What the heck did I do that for? There we go. Now I can see the disaster unfolding. I really don't want to stretch this because then it won't meet back up nicely with the this side. So this is this is where we uh, gently, patiently scissors. Okay. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Okay. I don't even need to put more Mod Podge in there, it's so sticky. Close. It's not perfect, but it's close. Oh. Oh, come on, baby. Again, we're trying not to get wrinkles and bubbles. So another reason for not stretching things. I will put a strip of vinyl up this seam so it does not have to be perfect, but if it lies flat, that's just easier to deal with. Okay, oh my gosh. Y'all, I think it worked. Okay, so now the next step is to take our nifty edging tool and Okay, now, turn and push, oh, all right, push and turn. And this makes a clean line all the way around, like what I did with the X-Acto knife going straight down, except this is doing it around the circumference. Okay. 
Okay. Now, this is something I should have remembered from last time, is that it's easier to do this if you start at the seam. But it should just pull off nice and clean like that. Woohoo! Okay, so while we're here, this is how you make the, or change the height on this tool, of this tool. You unscrew the nut and washer from the top. Take this off carefully. <laughs> I have cut myself so many times doing this and I'm an adult. And then you remove as many washers as you want from each side. I'm taking four off there, so four off on the other side. And you put them somewhere where you won't lose them. So I put them right into the box where I keep this tool. Uh, then I put this and this. This is, this is where I cut myself. There we go. Okay, now. So there we are. Now we're going to attempt to do this at the top. A part of my reason for doing this was to see how the Arteza paint would perform. And I have to say, given all the white knuckle moments I've had so far because of how sticky this stuff is, I would not recommend it. You can do it. It's, it's probably going to be gorgeous if I live through this. <laughs> but this is a little too hair raising for me because of how sticky the dried paint is. So I'm guessing that I won't do this particular paint again. I will stick with the, if I wanna do ready to mix, or re, I'm sorry, if I wanna use ready to pour paints, I will go back to the Deco Art Fluid Art ready to pour paints. This makes a beautiful skin like this with whatever colors you have in this paint without the over the top stickiness that you're dealing with here. Now I really wanted Arteza to work out too, and it's, I, so far it's, you know, okay-ish. Oh, that's right. I'm going to start where the seam is this time. But it's not great. It's just, it's causing me a little too much anxiety here. And, you know, at my age, with my <laughs> blood pressure, <laughs> I'm supposed to be avoiding anxiety. And uh, that's hard enough to do this year as it is without adding to it with sticky paint. Okay. So, let's see if we can get this off. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Ta-da! I'm just going to go ahead and work with this now.
right. Like I said, I'm going to take this out and I'm going to spray seal it with clear matte, a couple coats. And uh, if I feel so compelled, I might do another layer of the Mod Podge and the glitter and then seal it again and then put it on my tumbler turner and epoxy it. I will add my rainbow glitter additive or sparkle additive to the resin. So the whole thing will be sparkly, but we should still have a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous acrylic skin pour on our tumbler. So stay tuned for the big reveal, folks. <laughs>